Love That Dog by Sharon Creech. Jack, room 105, Miss Stretchberry, September 13th. I don't want to because boys don't write poetry, girls do. September 21st. I tried, can't do it, brain's empty. September 27th. I don't understand the poem about the red wheelbarrow and the white chickens and why so much depends upon them. If that is a poem about the red wheelbarrow and the white chickens, then any words can be a poem. You've just got to make short lines. October 4th. Do you promise not to read it out loud? Do you promise not to put it on the board? Okay, here it is but I don't like it. So much depends upon a blue car splattered with mud speeding down the road. October 10th. What do you mean, why does so much depend upon a blue car? You didn't say before that I had to tell why. The wheelbarrow guy didn't tell why. October 17th. What was up with the snowy woods poem you read today? Why doesn't the person just keep going if he's got so many miles to go before he sleeps? And why do I have to tell more about the blue car splattered with mud speeding down the road? I don't want to write about that blue car that had miles to go before it slept. So many miles to go in such a hurry. October 24th. I'm sorry to say did not really understand the Tiger Tiger Burning Bright poem, but at least it sounded good in my ears. Here is the blue car with tiger sounds. Blue car, blue car, shining bright in the darkness of the night. Who could see you speeding by like a comet in the sky? I could see you in the night, blue car, blue car, shining bright. I could see you speeding by like a comet in the sky. Some of the tiger sounds are still in my ears like drums beat, beat, beating. October 31st. Yes, you could put the two blue car poems on the board, but only if you don't put my name on them. November 6th. They look nice typed up like that on blue paper on a yellow board but still don't tell anyone who wrote them, okay? And what does anonymous mean? Is it good? November 9th. I don't have any pets, so I can't write about one, and especially I can't write a poem about one. November 15th. Yes, I used to have a pet. I don't want to write about it. You're going to ask me why not, right? November 22nd. Pretend I still have that pet? Can't I make it up? up? Can't I make up a pet? A different one? Like a tiger or a hamster? A goldfish? Turtle? Snail? Worm? Flea? Okay, who is Jack talking to? Here in this book so far, on up to November 22nd, we kind of get an idea of who Jack's talking to. This is Jack's uh, as a student in Miss Stretchberry's class, and this is his journal, and it's dated. It's going down in chronological order, um, of, and it starts in September, and it goes all the way through, so we could see this throughout this school year, what they're doing. So this is Jack's journal, and he's writing to Miss Stretchberry. Now, we don't get her answers, but we can read about her, her responses to Jack and his journal as we read along. Okay, so we're going to see a story. This is, these are poems. Jack's, um, this write-up, Love That Dog, is a poem. Um, it's a free verse, which means there's really no rhyme or reason. It's, it's the words on paper, and it's how Jack sees it. So most of Jack's poetry is free verse. Rhymed poetry usually has a rhyme, and there's examples of rhyme poetry in the story. And then we have um, patterned poetry, and there'll be some patterned poetry throughout the story, and we'll look at that later. November 29th. I liked those small poems we read today. 
when they're small like that, you could read a whole bunch in a short time. And then in your head are all the pictures of all the small things from all the small poems. I liked how the kitten leaped in the cat poem and how you could see the long head of the horse in the horse poem. And especially I liked the dog in the dog poem because that's just how my yellow dog used to lie down with his tongue all limp and his chin between his paws and how he'd sometimes chomp at a fly and then sleep in his loose skin, just like that poet, Miss Valerie Worth says in her small dog poem december 4th why do you want to type what i wrote about reading the small poems it's not a poem is it i guess you could put it on the board if you want to but don't put my name on it in case other people think it's not a poem december 13th i guess it does look like a poem when you see it typed up like that but I think maybe it would be better if there were more space between the lines, like how I wrote it the first time. And I like the picture of the yellow dog you put beside it. But that's not how my yellow dog looked. January 10th. I really, really, really did not get the pasture poem you read today. I mean, somebody's going out to the pasture to clean the spring and to get a little tottery calf while he's out there and he isn't going to be gone long and he wants you, who is you, to come to? I mean, really. You said that Mr. Robert Frost who wrote about the pastor was also one, the one who wrote about the snowy woods and the miles to go before he sleeps well. I think Mr. Robert Frost has a little too much time on his hands. January 17th. Remember the wheelbarrow poem you read the first week of school? Maybe the wheelbarrow poet was just making a picture with words and someone else, like maybe his teacher, typed it up and then people thought it was a poem because it looked like one typed up like that. And maybe that's the same thing that happened with Mr. Robert Frost. Maybe he was just making pictures with words about the snowy woods and the pasture and his teacher typed them up and they looked like poems. So people thought they were poems. Like how you did with the blue cars thing and the reading the small poems thing on the board. Typed up, they look like poems. And the other kids are looking at them and they think, they really are poems, and they are all saying, who wrote that? Why don't they know who wrote it? Because here, um, they're asking who wrote the poem because they put, Jack had Miss Stretchberry put anonymous on it. What does anonym, anonymous mean? Hmm. It means that they wanted to remain uh, hidden. They didn't want to let their words be known who wrote it. January 24th, we were going for a drive and my father said, we won't be gone long, you come too. And so I went and we drove and drove until we stopped at a red brick building with a sign in blue letters, Animal Protection Shelter. And inside we walked down a long cement path, past cages with all kinds of dogs, big and small, fat and skinny, some of them hiding in the corner, but most of them bark, bark, barking and jumping up against the wire cage as we all, as we walk past, as if they were saying, me, me, choose me, I'm the best one. And that's where we saw the yellow dog standing against the cage with his paws curled around the wire and his long red tongue hanging out in his big black eyes looking a little sad and his long tail wag wag wagging as if he were saying me 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 choose me and we did we chose him and in the car he put his head against my chest and wrapped his paws around my arm as if he were saying thank you thank you thank you and the other dogs in the cages get killed dead if nobody chooses them. January 31st. 
yes, you could type up what I wrote about my yellow dog, but leave off the part about the other dogs getting killed dead because that's too sad. And don't put my name on it, please. And maybe it would look good on yellow paper. And maybe the title should be You Come To, February 7th. Yes, it looks good on yellow paper, but you forgot, again, to leave more space between the lines like I did when I wrote it. That's okay, though. Jack's a little demanding, isn't he? <laughs> February 15th. I like that poem we read today about street music in the city. My street is not in the middle of a city, so it doesn't have that loud music of horns and trucks, clash, flash, screech. My street is on the edge of a city, and it has quiet music most of the time. Whisk, meow, swish. My street is a thin one with houses on both sides, and my house is the white one with the red door. There's not too much traffic on my street, not like in the middle of a city. We play in the yards and sometimes in the street, but only if a grown-up or the big kids are out there too. And they will shout, car, if they see a car coming down our street. At both ends of our street are yellow signs that say, caution, children at play. But sometimes the cars pay no attention and speed down the road as if they are in a Big hurry with many miles to go before they sleep. February 21st. That was so great, those poems you showed us where the words make the shape of things that the poem's about. Like the one about an apple that was shaped like an apple. And the one about the house that was shaped like a house. My brain was pop, pop, popping when I looked at those poems. I never knew a poet person could do that funny kind of thing. February 26th. I tried one of those poems that looks like what it's about. My Yellow Dog by Jack. Now this is a shape poem that Jack made about his yellow dog. And if you are able to look at it, let me zoom in a little here. You can see, move me, that you have the eye, the ear, the nose, you've got his head, his tail's wagging. Um, you've got legs and a paw on each leg, and he's slop, slop, slobbering, and he sniff, sniff, sniffing. See his long ear? This is an example of a shape poem. March 1st. Yes, you could type up the yellow dog poem that looks like a dog, but this time keep the spaces exactly the same, and maybe it would look really, really good on yellow paper. Maybe you could put my name on it, but only if you want to. Only if you think it looks good enough. So he no longer wants to be anonymous. March 7th. I was a little embarrassed when people said things to me like, Neat poem, Jack. And how'd you think of that, Jack? And I really, really like the one you put up about the tree that is the shape like a tree. Not a fake looking tree, but like a real tree with straggly branches. But I want to know, who is the anonymous poet in our class who wrote that? And why didn't he or she want to put his or her name on it? Was it like me when I didn't think that my words were poems? Maybe you will tell the anonymous tree poet that his or her tree poem is really a poem. Really, really a good poem too. March 14th. That was the best, best, best poem you read yesterday by Mr. Walter Dean Myers. The best, best, best poem ever. I am sorry I took the book home without asking. I only got one spot on it. That's why the page is torn. I tried to get the spot out. I copied the best poem and hung it on my bedroom wall right over my bed where I could see it when I'm lying down. Maybe you could copy it too and hang it on the wall in our class where we could see it when we are sitting at our desk doing our stuff. I sure like that poem by Mr. Walter Dean Myers called Love That Boy because of two reasons I liked it. One is because my dad calls me in the morning. Just like that, he calls, hey there, son. And also because when I had my yellow dog, I loved that dog. 
I would call him like this. I'd say, hey there, Sky. His name was Sky. March 22nd. My yellow dog followed me everywhere, every which way I turned. He was there wagging his tail and slobber coming out of his mouth when he was smiling at me all the time as if he was saying, thank you, thank you, thank you for choosing me and jumping up on me, the shaggy, straggly paws on my chest like he was trying to hug the insides right out of me. And when us kids were playing outside, kicking the ball, he chased after it and push it with his nose, push, 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 and getting slobber all over the ball. But no one cared because he was such a funny dog, that dog sky, that straggly, furry, smiling dog sky. And I'd call him every morning, every evening. Hey there, sky 27. Yes, you could type up what I wrote about my dog sky, but don't type up that other secret one I wrote, the one all folded up in the envelope with tape on it, that one uses too many of Mr. Walter D. Myers' words. And maybe Mr. Walter D. Myers would get mad about that. April 4th. I was very glad to hear that Mr. Walter Dean Myers is not the sort of person who would get mad at a boy for using some of his words. And thank you for typing up my secret poem, the one that uses so many of Mr. Walter D. Myers' words, and I like what you put at the top, inspired by Walter Dean Myers. That sounds good to my ears. Now, no one will think I just copied because I couldn't think of my own words. They will know I was inspired by Mr. Walter Dean Myers. But don't put it on the board yet, okay? Is Mr. Walter Dean Myers a live person? And if he is, do you think he could ever come to our city, to our school, to our class? And if he did... We should hide my poem with his words, hide it real good, just in case he would get mad about that. April 9th, no, 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 no. I can't do it. You should do it. You're a teacher. What do you think she asked him to do here? Hmm. April 12th, I don't agree that Mr. Walter Dean Myers might like to hear from a boy who likes his poems. I think Mr. Walter Dean Myers would like to hear from a teacher who uses big words and knows how to spell and to type. So Miss Stretchberry has suggested that Jack write um, Mr. Walter Dean Myers. And Jack's like, no, 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 I can't do it. You've got to do it. You're the teacher. So let's see what happens. April 17th. Dear Mr. Walter Dean Myers, you probably don't want to hear from me because I am only a boy, not a teacher, and I don't use big words. And you probably won't read this, or even if you do read it, you're probably way too busy to answer it, let alone do the thing I'm going to ask you. And I want you to know that's okay. Because our teacher says writers are very, 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 very busy trying to write their words and the phone is ringing, and the fax is going, and the bills need paying, and sometimes they get sick. I hope you're not sick, Mr. Walter Dean Myers, or their family gets sick, or their electricity goes off, or their car needs fixing, or they have to go to the grocery store, or do the laundry, or clean up messes. I don't know how you find the time to write your words if you have to do all that stuff, and maybe you should get a helper. So what I'm asking you is this. If you ever get time to leave your house, and if you ever feel like visiting a school where there might be some kids who like your poems, would you ever maybe think about maybe coming maybe to our school? Which is a clean place with mostly nice people in it. And I think our teacher, Miss Stretchberry, would maybe even make brownies for you because she sometimes makes them for us. I hope I haven't too much stopped you from doing your writing of words and fixing your car and getting groceries and all that stuff just to read this letter, which is probably taking you maybe 15 minutes. And in that time, you could have written, you could have maybe written a whole new poem or at least the start of one. And so I am sorry for taking up your time. And I understand if you can't come to our 
clean school and read some of your poems to us and let us see your face, which I bet is a friendly face. My name is Jack. Bye, Mr. Walter D. Myers. April 20th. Did you mail it? Did he answer yet? April 24th. Months? It might take months for Mr. Walter Dean Myers to answer my letter if he answers it. I didn't know until you explained that the letter has to go to Mr. Walter Dean Myers' publisher company, and then someone at the publisher company has to sort all the mail. Not just my letter, but hundreds and hundreds of letters to hundreds of authors. And that big mess of mail piled up and someone sorting, sorting, sorting all that mail. And then the letters from Mr. Walter D. Myers go to him. And maybe he's away. Maybe he's on vacation. Maybe he's sick. Maybe he's hiding in a room writing poems. Maybe he's babysitting his children or his grandchildren, if he's married and stuff. Or maybe he has to go to the dentist or get that car fixed. Or maybe someone died I really, really, really hope someone did not die. So, if you ask me, it could take him years to get around to answering that letter. So, I guess we'd better just forget about it. Not count on it. Get it out of our minds. Do something else. Forget it. April 26th. Sometimes when you are trying not to think about something, it keeps popping back into your head. You can't help it. You think about it and think about it, and think about it, until your brain feels like a squashed pea. May 2nd. Yes, you could type up the thing about trying not to think about something, but you'd better leave my name off it because it was just words coming out of my head, and I wasn't paying too much attention to which words came out when. May 7th. Maybe you should show me how to use the computer and then I could type up my own words. May 8th. I didn't know about the spell checking thing inside the computer. It's like a miracle little brain in there, a little helper brain. But I am a slow typer person. Did you say there is a teaching typing thing that in that computer too? Will it help me type better and faster? Tap, 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 so my fingers can go as fast as my brain? May 14th. I typed this up myself. My sky. We were outside in the street, me and some other kids, kicking the ball before dinner, and Sky was chasing, chasing, chasing with his feet going every which way, and his tail wag, wag, wagging, and his mouth slob, slob, slobbering, and he was all over the place. Smiling and wagging and slobbering and making us laugh, and my dad came walking up the street. He was way down there near the end. I could see him after he got off the bus, and he was walk, walk, walking, and I saw him wave, and he called out, Hey there, son! And so I didn't see the car coming from the other way until someone else, one of the big kids, called out, Car! And I turned around and saw a Blue car, blue car, splattered with mud, speeding down the road. And I saw Sky going after the ball, wag, wag, wagging his tail. And I called him, Sky, Sky! And he turned his head, but it was too late. Because the blue car, blue car, splattered with mud, hit Sky. Thud, thud, thud. And kept on going in such a hurry, so fast, so many miles to go, it couldn't even stop. And Sky was just there in the road, lying on his side with his legs bent funny and his side heaving. He looked up at me and I said, Sky, Sky, Sky. And then my dad was there and he lifted Sky out of the road and laid him on the grass. And Sky closed his eyes. And he never opened them again, ever. May 15th. I don't know. If you put it on the board and people read it, it might make them sad. May 17th. Okay, I guess I'll put my name on it. But I hope it doesn't make people feel too sad. And if it does, maybe you could think of something to cheer everybody up. Like maybe with some of those brownies you make, the chocolate ones that are so good. May 21st. Wow. 
Wow, 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 wow. That was the best, best, best news ever. I can't believe it. Mr. Walter Dean Myers is really, really, really coming to our school. He was coming to our city anyway to see his old buddy. And he would be honored to visit our clean school and meet the mostly nice kids who like his poems. We are so lucky that his old buddy lives in our town. Wow. May 28th. The bulletin board looks like it's blooming words with everybody's poems up there on all those colored sheets of paper, yellow, blue, pink, red, green. And the bookcase looks like it's sprouting books, all of them by Mr. Walter Dean Myers, lined up looking back at us, waiting for Mr. Walter Dean Myers himself to come to our school, right into our classroom. Wow. May 20. May 29th. I can't wait. I can't sleep. Are you sure you hid my poem that was inspired by Mr. Walter Dean Myers? I don't want to do any, any, anything to upset him. June 1st. Mr. Walter Dean Myers Day. I never in my whole life ever heard anybody who could talk like that Mr. Walter Dean Myers. All of my blood in my veins was bubbling and all of the thoughts in my head were buzzing and I wanted to keep Mr. Walter Dean Myers in our school forever. June 6th, dear Mr. Walter Dean Myers, thank you a hundred million times for leaving your work and your family and your things people have to do to come and visit us in our school, in our class. We hope you liked your visit. We think maybe you did because you were smile, smile, smiling all over the place. And when you read, read your poems, you had the best, best, best voice, low and deep and friendly and warm, like it was reaching out and wrapping us all up in a big squeeze. And when you laughed, you had the best, best, best laugh I've ever heard in my life, like it was coming from way down deep and bubbling up and rolling and tumbling out into the air. We hope we didn't ask you too many questions, but we thank you for answering every which one and especially for saying that you would be flattered if someone used some of your words and especially if they added a note that they were inspired by Mr. by Walter Dean Myers. And it was nice of you to read all of our poems on the bulletin board and I hope it didn't make you too sad when you read the one about my dog Sky getting smushed in the road. And I think you like the Brownies too, right? Thank you for coming to see us, Mr. Walter Dean Myers. Inside this envelope is a poem using some of your words. I wrote it. I was inspired by you, Mr. Walter Dean Myers, from your number one fan, Jack. Love that dog inspired by Mr. Walter Dean Myers by Jack. Love that dog like a bird loves to fly. I said, I love that dog like a bird loves to fly. Love to call him in the morning. Love to call him. Hey there, Sky. Hey, boys and girls. I want to show you some of the books in the back of the book, Love That Dog. Um, these are some of the poems that Miss Stretchberry used in class that you, we read that Jack talked about. So the first one is The Red Wheel Barrel by William Carlos Williams. So much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chickens. And um, he made some, uh, Jack made reference to the blue car, how so much depends upon a blue car speeding down the road. And um, so this is the poem that they read in class. Um, there's also Robert Frost stopping by the woods for a snowy evening. The Tiger by William Blake. Tiger, tiger burning bright in the forest of the night. What immortal hand or eye could frame thy tearful symmetry? Now, this is the one that Jack said, I didn't get it. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, they sometimes authors use vocabulary that are just far past us. Dog by Valerie Worth. This is the one that he said that he reminded him of his dog, Sky. Under the maple tree, the dog lies down, lolls his limp tongue, yawns, rests his long chin carefully between front paws, looking up, alert, chops with heavy jaws at a slow fly, blinks, rolls on his side, sighs, 
closes his eyes, sleeps all afternoon in his loose skin. And then here's another, the other one by Robert Frost, the pastor. Street music, he referenced um, saying that his street was like in the suburbs, not in the middle of the city. And so this one was by Arnold Adolf. This city, the always noisy grinding up from the subways, underground, slamming from bus tires and taxi horns and engines of cars and trucks and all vocabularies of clash, flash, screech, hot metal language combinations. As planes overhead roar, an orchestra of rolling drums and battle blast, assaulting my ears with the always noise of the city street music. Now, again, Jack said that he didn't live in the middle of the street like this. His is a long street, then a long thin street. His was the White House with the red door. Shake poems. These are also known as concrete poems. This is the apple by S.C. Rigg. Um, you can see here it says stem, where the stem actually is. These are actually really fun to make. And it's apple, apple, apple. It's got some descriptive words in it. Dis, uh, juicy, crunchy, red, yellow, green, apple, delicious. This one um, also has a worm in it. If you look right here, it says wormy, worm, yuck, yuck. There's a worm in it. Uh, yum, delicious. Okay, so those are called shape poems, or also they're known as concrete poems. And then finally, this is the one uh, that Jack ends, um, love that dog. Uh, but this is actually Walter Dean Myers. Uh, this is the poem that he wrote that inspired Jack. Love that boy by Walter Dean Myers. Love that boy like a rabbit loves to run. I said, I love that boy like a rabbit loves to run. Love to call him in the morning. Love to call him. Hey there, son. And that is the end of the book. Um, Sharon Creech's book is that this one is Love That Dog by Sharon Creech.